Washington Mistresses, next on Evening Magazine. Now through microtechnology, Elizabeth Arden goes beyond liposomes to bring you immediate relief for dry, stressed-looking skin. Micro 2000 Stressed Skin Concentrate with hydrospheres 100 times smaller than liposomes. Micro 2000 saturates skin instantly with moisture, renewing radiance, resilience. Micro 2000 from Elizabeth Arden. Advanced beauty, your gift with any Elizabeth Arden purchase of $10 or more. Now at Emporium Capwell. There's a smorgasbord tonight, all you can eat. It's flex time. New flex time, a better way to control your appetite. Take it anytime you're tempted to overeat and control hunger just for that meal. It's flex time. New flex time from AccuTrim. Take it just when you need to. I'll get the bags. Okay. You showed this for you. Remember when you didn't have to demand service when you just got it? Let me get that, Mr. At American Savings, we're over $15 billion strong, and accounts are federally insured up to $100,000. Glad you spotted the problem before it became a problem. Jesus, it's my pleasure. You know we're leaving after the war. But most importantly, we remember banking the way it ought to be. We're to this time. It's our secret. It's our second honeymoon. American Savings, banking the American way. The Warriors meet the Lakers Wednesday at 7.30. seduced presidents and destroyed promising careers. Have I been absolutely and totally faithful to my wife? I regret to say the answer is no. Tonight, why Washington's most powerful men risk marriage and political position for lust. Then Huey Lewis, Sheila E., Narda Michael Walden, and more join KFOG's Trish Robbins at the Bay Area's hottest music party of the year, the Bammies. And Robbins and Collins show you how the East Bay beats the morning back up on the Bay Bridge. You're commuting to San Francisco? Yes. And you're about to climb in a car with somebody you've probably never met. That's right. It was Groucho Marx who once said, behind every great man there is a woman, and behind her is his wife. Good evening, I'm Richard Hart. And I'm Jan Yanahiro. Well, that statement seems to be particularly true for Texas Senator John Tower, up for nomination as Secretary of Defense. And if you just glance down those hallowed halls of democracy, it's easy to see that sex and power have gone hand in hand for some time. Mr. President, the late Marilyn Monroe. I'm a human being in addition to being mayor. Have I been absolutely and totally faithful to my wife? I regret to say the answer is no. to JFK, from Wayne Hayes to Gary Hart to San Antonio Mayor Henry Cisneros, some men in government have been known to play around with more than just politics. Whether it's the secretary hired to do anything but type or the starlet with anything but making movies on her mind, plenty of powerful men have fallen off their political pedestals due to a public mess with their private mistress. They think that they're wonderful and everybody's telling them that. Policemen are stopping traffic for them. They walk into restaurants, are given the best table. Whatever they want, they pick up a telephone, or they have somebody on their staff pick up a telephone, and it's there. So this carries over. They think that they're entitled to as many women as they want. No one knows more about political promiscuity than syndicated Washington gossip columnist Karen Feld. She attends enough government galas to see firsthand who's doing what with whom. The latest sex scandal subject, President Bush's candidate for defense secretary, John Tower. When John Tower was arms negotiator in Geneva a couple years ago, he and his then wife, Lila, had some very public scenes. And he had other women over there. Uh, allegedly, he was drinking over there quite a bit. And it became a problem because he was in a very sensitive position. Despite the rumors, the results of an FBI probe released last week reportedly cleared Tower of any connections with whiskey or women. President Bush claims that Tower's recent troubles will make him a stronger defense secretary. Well, I've never wavered in my support for John Tower. Then there are the long-lasting affairs that even the Washington socialites can accept and accommodate. 
in the last administration, there was a, a cabinet secretary who had a long-term affair with a woman in England. And he finally brought her over, and he was married. All the society ladies and the wives of the other cabinet secretaries whispered about it. Well, what do we do? We like the girlfriend of, but we also like the wife of. Do we give a tea to welcome girlfriend of to the new neighborhood, and do we invite wife of? I mean, these are real social dilemmas in this town. Psychoanalyst Dr. Justin Frank knows about the psyche of the political male from living and working in Washington. A lot of these people attract women who are interested in seducing them and interested in their power. I don't think it has anything to do with physical attractiveness at all. I think that power is the single greatest attraction. I mean, why did Candace Bergen and Barbara Hauer and all these glamorous women flock to Henry Kissinger? Why has John Tower become this notorious womanizer? Here he's a very small man who might have a super personality, but physically, he's not Robert Redford. But what about the wives? According to Dr. Frank, average-looking politicians begin to feel that the women who were attracted to them before they were powerful aren't important anymore. They may resent their wives a little bit. There becomes a discrepancy between how admired the husband is by his wife and how admired the husband is by the general public or by other women who are, who are interested in him. And then uh, the husband may act uh, sexually with a woman um, either because he's angry at his wife or because he's hurt. I always hear these stories where he says, oh, I feel so sorry for Lee Hart. I feel so sorry for Joan Kennedy, for all the women whose husbands are either caught or notoriously are running around publicly. Well, if you felt that sorry for these women, these are women who could lead these men. These women have made a deal, and they are willing to put up with it. They know what's going on. And just what are these Washington women putting up with? Well, try the trading of sex for votes, which is what lobbyist Paula Parkinson claims she did. Paula Parkinson, she was the blonde lobbyist, who sincerely was in love with Tom Evans, a congressman from Delaware. And that was when they went to this golf house down in Florida one weekend with Dan Quayle was there and Tom Railsback. The time all three were congressmen. And of course, you know, Dan Quayle has said nothing has happened. Vice President Quayle has denied any personal relationship with Paula Parkinson. But whether political passions are hushed or not, history does seem to repeat itself. Washington men continue to risk their marriages, their power, and their politics. I think that they feel they can get away with anything. Now, Senator John Tower has just said that if confirmed, he will swear off all drinking. He would not take one drop of alcohol. And if he broke his promise, he said he would resign immediately. Notice he said nothing at all about topic A tonight, womanizing. Oh, and a footnote to tonight's story. One of the more celebrated adulterers of our time, Congressman Wayne Hayes, passed away last week. Uh, he was the one who put Elizabeth Ray, his mistress, on the congressional payroll. And, of course, Elizabeth later admitted she couldn't even type. What's better than the Grammys? The 12th Annual Bammies, up next. And now, from the Eyewitness Newsroom, Kate Kelly. Coming up at 11 on Nightcast, as the investigation goes on into what caused United's jet disaster, another United plane is delayed overnight. What they found to hold the plane on the ground at 11. A famous chef comes to the Bay Area to open a new restaurant, but why here? What's he got cooking up his sleeve on Nightcast? Plus, happy ho comings for Navy couples, the USS Nimitz with loved ones on solid ground. My dad, he always wanted a son. He used to take me to baseball games. <laughs> he even taught me to box. And one time, I hit this kid named Richard Estabrook so hard I knocked his front tooth out. Mom yelled at me, but Dad loved it. You know, becoming a woman wasn't easy for me, but it was harder on him. And Klein, too. This pasta will stay good for a year in your freezer. This dried linguine will outlast most marriages. And this will probably survive the next ice age. On the other hand, Contadina fresh pastas and sauces won't last very long at all. We make them fresh, and we keep them fresh, which naturally gives them a great fresh taste. 
Contadina fresh pastas and sauces. Our days are numbered, but we wouldn't have it any other way. One, two, three. Let me take you to the party. Lake Tahoe swinging party. On the South Shore, where the girls are. Catch a star where moonlight glimmers. It's to all those lucky winners. Girl Brigitte Nielsen, does she have what it takes to get back on Hollywood's A-list tomorrow on Evening Magazine? The Bay Area's great musicians all came out Saturday night for the 12th annual BAMIs, the Bay Area Music Awards, held at the San Francisco Civic Auditorium. KFOG's Trish Robbins was there to give us a behind-the-scenes look at why they're calling the 1989 BAMIs the party of the year. What's that sound like? I always wanted to do that, sorry. If the Grammys are glitz in L.A., then the Bammies are pure San Francisco. Actually, the Bay Area Music Awards aren't really about awards at all. It's a chance to party, to play great music, and hang with rock's biggest stars. At this year's 12th Annual Bammy Awards, I discovered why the bash of the year could only happen here. The Bay Area represents a lot of heart and soul. Huey on the pop side has done so much, Steve Perry, the journey. So it's more that there's some strong individuals who bring a lot of real genius to the Bay Area. That I like. It's easier here in the Bay Area because you're not distracted with all the other uh, paper mache concept from somewhere else. It's the best place in the world to live, bar none. On Bammy night, 6,000 fans packed the hall, and KFOG broadcast the show to another 100,000 listeners at home. Oakland's hot new band, Tony, 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 opened the show, but it took Van Halen's Sammy Hagar to kick the party into high gear. What's the best thing about the Bammies, Bill? That's not the Grammys. Uh, the best thing about the Bammies is the hang. Not to make light of it, but the best thing about the Bammies is cleavage and sequins. Sequins and cleavage. There was plenty of that on Bammy night. San Francisco always has a style of its own. I think the highlight was already going on stage with uh, Clarence Clemens and singing and dancing and playing drums and sweating and bringing the people the uh, spirit of music. The Bamis to me is about music. There was something new in the music at the Bammies this year, diversity. In one night, you could hear Katie Webster belting out the blues. Singing over 35 years, I sang the blues and play some boogie woogie too. And the Mexican ballads of Danny Valdez and Linda Ronstadt. <laughs> Buck Owens Country Twang. And I'll play the part, I won't need rehearsing. Hey, all I gotta do is act naturally. Followed by the rock pyrotechnics of guitarist Joe Satriani. <laughs> For the first time, the Bammies recognized the rich mix of Bay Area talent. I love that talk. That baby talk. Don't you talk like that? And the Bammy goes to Simple, Simple Pleasures, Bobby, Bobby McFerrin. Bobby McFerrin may have won four Grammys, but here at home he only picked up one Bammy for Outstanding Jazz Album. This year Bobby could afford to be generous, so he gave away his Bammy to another nominee. And if Claire Wasserman is in the audience, I would like to present this Bammy to her. And the Bammy goes to... Carlos Santana! Cool. 
fans voted Santana Musician of the Year, and surprise, picked Huey Lewis and the News as Outstanding Group, only the fifth time in six years. Maybe the real surprise of the evening was a rare appearance by Neil Young, whose This Notes For You be Don't Worry, Be Happy for Best Song. In the words of my brother, don't worry, be happy. But the toughest competition this year was for outstanding male vocalist, with McFerrin up against Huey Lewis, Sammy Hagar, and Boz Skagg. And the winner is... Sammy Hagar! I think they blew it by saving this award till the end because I'm drunk. <laughs> And uh, it's fun being a singer. There's no better feeling in the world than standing up there singing and just letting go like that. It's really, doesn't matter what the words are, is what you're really saying is, this is me, this is what I believe in, this is what I stand for, who I am, and that feels great to let that out night after night. I thank God for the gift, thank you. the 12th annual Bammies, there were the big stars, the brilliant newcomers, and the show-stopping, one-of-a-kind San Francisco jams. Maybe the important thing about the Bammies is it reminds us that the Bay Area music scene is second to none. the Bammies is a charitable event. None of the musicians gets paid to perform. Now this year the proceeds, some $60,000, went to Project Open Hand. Project Open Hand is a non-profit organization that provides free meals for people with AIDS. Their number is on our hotline. You're gonna get in somebody's car you don't know. Right. The East Bay's way to beat the backup next. just one shot away from the final four. Take your best shot at winning one of three great basketball prizes in the KPIX Pepsi Final Four sweepstakes. Two round-trip tickets to the NCAA Final Four in Seattle on Alaska Airlines. Two round-trip tickets to the Western Regionals. Or season tickets for the Bay Area College basketball team of your choice. Entry forms at all participating Lucky stores and winners will be drawn on March 14th at KPIX. Take your best shot. The KPIX Pepsi Final Four sweepstakes. DHL presents international shipping. Some express companies have just started shipping overseas, and it takes a while to get into the swing of things, like borders, languages, and customs. But DHL's been dealing with all that for 20 years, and you'll find getting a package through customs is a lot easier when you ship with someone who knows the ropes. DHL, the world's express company. Observed that few things can compete for one's loyalty and affection more than a Honda. Finding clothing in the right size was rather difficult for the Belivsky String Quartet, which made it difficult to play perfect music. Fortunately, they discovered C&R Clothiers. C&R carries a large selection in all sizes, 35 extra short to 52 long. Now they look great and play great. Well, they look great. C&R, because you deserve more. February 28th, mark it down. For that one day, let's all see how much we can improve the traffic problem in the Bay Area. Plan on carpooling or take public transportation. February 28th, let's all beat the backup together. Don't miss Mikhail Baryshnikov's new production of Swan Lake at the War Memorial Opera House. 
All right, commuters, we're almost there. Meet the backup day tomorrow. Jan and I are riding the Sausalito Ferry on the show today to demonstrate that you don't have to ride in a car alone to get to work. But on the other hand, you don't have to walk, ride the ferry boat, or even bicycle. There is a way you can ride in a car, have lots of fun, meet interesting people, and beat the backup. Ooh, the morning commute. And this is a good day. You don't want to see a bad day. Boy, I, I wonder what you could do about it. You're commuting to San Francisco? Yes. And you're about to climb in a car with somebody you've probably never met. That's right. You do this every day? Yes. Would you do that? Would you want your daughter doing that? Unless you're one of the people who has to cross the Bay Bridge into the city every day, you may not even be aware that this goes on. But there are places here in the East Bay where people, lots of them, line up and cars get in line and together they're saving themselves a buck and knocking about a half hour off the morning commute. Because you see, if you're a single driver, once you pick up two riders, suddenly you're a carpool. You can breeze right by the toll plaza at the Bay Bridge, and you don't have to pay a buck. It's a whole subculture with its own set of rules that everybody knows, but nobody talks about. We had never experienced this, so we figured the best way to find out was firsthand. Well, somebody just climbed in your car, and you didn't even look back to see who it is. Well, I'm talking to you right now, but normally I say good morning and see who they are. Do you ever, have you ever picked anybody up that you kind of wish you hadn't? No, I've been real lucky. Have you ever said to somebody, uh, don't get in my car? No, I have never said that. Commuting in San Francisco? Yes. Do this every day? Yes. Uh, you're going to get in somebody's car you don't know? Right. We have heard that usually people who like to talk will sit in the front, and if they don't like to talk, they get They're in the back. In the back. That's yeah. very true. That's very true. That's a good way. That's a very good observation. Well, you get the idea. It, it seems kind of weird, but we were willing to give it a try. And we were willing to give it a try both ways. We rode in a stranger's car, and we gave some strangers a ride in ours. First off, we hooked up with Annie okay, here in her Subaru you? station wagon. Uh, we're doing a story for Evening Magazine. Can we bring a cameraman with us? Yeah, that's fine. Come on in, Mono. You want to get the door? Come on, Mono. Get in. Thanks. Hi, I'm Paul. And we gave a ride to Kathy and Mike in the Evening Magazine van. There we go. Have a seat on the back bench. Please. Hey, Mondo. Come on. It seems like the commuting uh, etiquette is much more polite than general traffic etiquette. Uh, you mean as far as people waiting their turn and that sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah, it's surprising how well it works. A couple of real regulars. Where are we going, Mike? Uh, yeah, just uh, get on the regular freeway and, and stay in the right lane. Uh, I'll be looking for your right exit here. Is this kind of an incentive for you to keep your car clean? But follow that van. Around to the left here a little bit. Yes. Annie, you didn't think to bring any cookies or coffee or anything like that, did you? No, you know, I thought on occasion that it would be kind of a nice gesture. That bag over there next to you has uh, some cheese and plain croissants in it. I, I think I'll pass in for some. Thank you. Okay, there's a scone and a bran muffin in this bag. Here, Kathy. Under an or ordinary circumstances, would you ever pick up a hitchhiker? No. Kathy or Mike, would you guys ever consider hitchhiking or getting into somebody else's car you didn't know uh, in any other circumstance? No. So that's the rule. Always somebody in front, somebody in back. Mm -hmm. There seems to be a lot of commonly understood etiquette about this that no one has ever crystallized or written down, but everybody seems to abide by these rules. It does seem that way. Is this more talking than you've ever done on one of these commutes? It definitely is. Well, Kathy, it was very nice meeting you. And, and, Thanks, Annie. Okay. Appreciate the ride. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And you have a great day at work. Okay. I'll see you in TV land. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Well, here's the end of the line. The Trans Bay Terminal in San Francisco, where most all the writers get dropped off. And I guess that's where the story ends as well. What have we learned this morning? Uh, you can save yourself some money. And some time. By carpooling with strangers from the East Bay. If you decide to try it, by the way, and you talk a lot, sit in the front. Yeah, if you don't like to talk, sit in the back and read the paper and just mind your own business. What else? You don't eat in somebody else's car. You don't drink coffee. But I thought it was a nice touch that we offered those croissants. Yeah, I think Mike enjoyed the coffee. Yeah. In closing, let us salute these fine Bay Area residents who come together each and every day in a spirit of community cooperation, giving of themselves to beat the back of Giving of themselves. They're saving a half hour in line and a buck every day. At the end of a year, that's uh, 130 hours waiting in line and $260. That yeah, is. Yeah. They should have bought us croissants. For Evening Magazine, I'm Paul Robbins. I spent eight bucks on those. He's Bill Cowan. 882. Here, I got the receipt. There is an organization that can put you in touch with the right people with the right ride share. Call 863-5555, our evening magazine hotline number, and we'll put you in touch with them. Up next, how beating the backup could win you a traffic-free vacation.
Time is running out on Emporium Capwell's semi-annual home sale. After Monday, March 6th, it all comes to an end. The 25 to 50% savings, the deferred billing, the last chance to save on sofas, chairs, recliners, installed carpeting, area rugs, and mattresses. They're all 25 to 50% off now with no payment and finance charge for 90 days on purchases of $200 or more. So get moving. After Monday, March 6th, it's all over. Mess hall in the living room? Don't just clean it. Coit it. Coit, the world's most experienced cleaners of draperies, carpets, and upholstery. Coit removes and rehangs draperies at your convenience with parallel pleats, even hems, and no shrinkage guaranteed. Call Coit now and get 20% off drapery cleaning. So next time you're seeing spots, remember, don't just clean it. Coit it. Call Coit now for a free estimate and get 20% off. Coit. When you want it, spotless. Hi, I'm Tony Bennett, and I'd like to tell you about the AM radio station that I listen to. Magic 61. It plays just the right kind of music. Nat King Cole, Glenn Miller, Frank Sinatra, and favorites by a guy named Tony. The right blend of music. Great personalities, right, Brian? And you can win gifts like a luxury cruise. So join me and listen to America's best music. 61 on your AM dial. Magic 61. Something is happening at McDonald's. Buy a Coca-Cola. Peel the sticker. And play Splash for Cash. You could win $25,000 instantly. Super discounts on McDonald's food, vacations via Delta Airlines, or free passports to Disneyland. So drop into McDonald's today. Play Splash for Cash and celebrate Splash Mountain coming to Disneyland this summer. After all, you would want to be left high and dry. Those of you who are going to beat the backup tomorrow by riding this Sausalito Ferry or the Larkspur Ferry are lucky. You'll be served free coffee tomorrow, and on the way back home on the Larkspur Ferry, courtesy of Baxter's Restaurant, you'll be served hors d'oeuvres. Sounds good. For those of you who work in Santa Clara County, thousands of free passes, good for one day only, tomorrow will be given away on the Santa Clara County Transit by your employer. And if you didn't get them for the morning commute tomorrow, they're still good for the ride home tomorrow night. And how about these free stress cards from BART's? Any young men's stress I'm stressed. stressed. Yeah. I'm stressed. Waiting for tomorrow's big drawing. Jan and I on the show tomorrow will draw the winners of three commute-free vacations in a stress-free environment. <laughs> Here's what else is coming up tomorrow night. Brigitte Nielsen broke Rambo's heart and stole Mark Gastineau from the gridiron. But does she have what it takes to get back on Hollywood's A-list? Tomorrow we'll visit the set of her new movie, Murder by Moonlight, to find out. Then, in 21 years, the Donahue Show has made controversy its trademark. From abortion to incest, is Phil Donahue the true king of trash TV? And tomorrow is Beat the Backup Day, and you could be the winner of a traffic-free vacation. Will it be smooth sailing on the new love boat? or hitting the powder slopes in Utah. We hope to see you tomorrow on the bus, in the carpool lane, or right here on the ferry boat. Thanks for joining us this evening. And help us beat the backup. I'm so stressed. Press harder. Good so. night. Travel arranged through U.S. Air with 178 nonstop flights daily between the Los Angeles and Bay Areas. U.S. Air with more flights in California than any other airline. Eddie Murphy and television provide a comical escape. Throw away your remote and catch What's Alan Watching next.